for you and we're gonna get started. I wanted to come in after about four months of not doing a video <laughs> and do a follow-up video to the last video that I posted, uh, a last tutorial video about YouTube and why I chose YouTube to stream for my fitness classes. But today I wanna to talk about Crowdcast instead. Yeah, because I use both platforms, and so I want to share the pros and cons of Crowdcast and how I use Crowdcast in addition to YouTube, um, and hopefully it will help you make your decisions for whatever platform you want to choose to stream your uh, events or your fitness classes on, and uh, and hopefully it's helpful. So uh, I stream my fitness classes daily, Tuesdays through Fridays, um, using both platforms, and then um, I also run I run a full full membership for my classes. And uh, I get a lot of people commenting and reaching out about how I'm doing everything. So I'm trying to put more tutorials up on YouTube as a way to help people with their setups and get going with running your own virtual gym because that's all us fitness instructors can do right now because the world is shut down. So, <laughs> uh, okay, so my name is Kate. Uh, welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, thank you for coming. Please leave a comment. Tell me who you are. Tell me what you're here learning, wanting to learn or what you're wondering about. Um, I really love hearing from people and knowing like what you're here for and what you need because that helps me produce content that you can use. So, um, all this stuff is below in the comments about like how to get a hold of me, where, I, where you can find me, where I hang out on social media and everything. But let's get started about Crowdcast and I'm um, talking about how I use it and what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and um, and how it could be helpful for you. So I'm gonna put screenshots as well uh, for you so you can see those up over on the side of the camera over on this side um, while we go through everything. And I'm sure I'll forget things, you guys. If you have questions, just drop them below. So hopefully you watched the other previous uh, video about why I'm choosing YouTube as in conjunction with Crowdcast. If you didn't catch that video, then you can go find it. Um, I'll try to remember to put a little card up here for it too if I figure out how to do that. I always forget. Um, but Crowdcast is a newer platform, newish. Uh, I actually don't even know when they started, but I found them last uh, June, I think it was. So I've been streaming with them since June. And um, they're, uh, they're a live streaming platform just like YouTube is, just like you can live stream to Facebook. And you can use uh, any streaming software with Crowdcast, which is very beneficial because I use OBS to stream and I do not teach my classes on Zoom. So if you're watching and wondering what, what how I do that, I don't use Zoom. I don't think Zoom is good for audio video quality and that's what really matters to me most. And so um, because I was able to use OBS with Crowdcast, that was a pro for me. And then I can multi-stream with the version of Crowdcast that I have, I can multi-stream to YouTube at the same time. So multi-streaming means you're streaming to two platforms at once or more than two, uh, and you're hitting two audiences. Now, uh, I'll talk more about how I, how and why I do that in just a little bit. But this video is really just gonna be basic about what I like about Crowdcast, why I chose to use them for my classes, and then what I don't like. Uh, so let's start with the list of the things I do like about Crowdcast. Um, these are not, not really in any order, so they're just kind of random. Uh, so the, the big thing about Crowdcast, you guys, that YouTube does not provide, uh, as far as I know, I feel like they might go this route, uh, but Crowdcast puts up paywalls. It is, uh, it is a way to put a price on your on your live stream event and it puts up that paywall so that your members either have to pay the fee for the class or you can also integrate a membership option. Um, and it's really awesome when you get into Crowdcast and you set up an event, I'll put a screenshot up over here. Um, you can choose when you set your payment option, you can choose a fixed payment price which means that it's a flat rate. Like when I choose my fixed payment, it's $8 per class. That's for somebody who's not, uh, not a member and they just wanna do a drop-in class. Um, you can choose sliding scale, which is essentially a donation amount. So you, and you get to set the minimum. So let's say that you wanna accept donations or not really donation, but you wanna uh, pick your price. You can choose the minimum. So let's say I'm gonna say, you guys, uh, you have to pay me at least $3, but if you're willing, you can pay more. So then that person or that participant can choose. So that's really awesome. Um, or as you can see, they do have a Patreon integration as well. Uh, Patreon is a membership uh, site program for mostly, for, I think it's mainly YouTubers. Um, 
And I did not choose to go with Patreon for my membership site. I did crunch numbers and it just turned out that the, the software that I had already previously purchased for a different part of my business was going to be more cost effective than Patreon. But you could definitely do Patreon. Um, there's just some, there's an, a few other glitches that I found if I was gonna try to use Patreon. So I just didn't go that route, but it's totally available, which is really awesome. And that gives you the option to, for example, you can set your different membership tiers. And then let's say that you have a class and you would sit, set the um, class as only available to the tier one level, or this class is available to all tiers, or this class is available to just the top tier. So you can kind of uh, pick and choose what's available to your membership that way. So those are the different payment options within Crowdcast. I really like the payment options. Um, in addition to that, uh, you can also play around with coupons in Crowdcast. So again, I'll put a screenshot up here. Uh, you can you can create your own coupon codes. You can set the, the discount for the coupon code. Uh, it only works on a discount basis right now. That is kind of a downfall. So it's not like you can't choose like $2 off or $5 off. You'd have to choose a percentage off, which is fine. I haven't had any you know run-ins with that or issues with that. Um, the other thing that I wish Crowdcast offered, which they do not, is the coupon is event specific. So it does not go across all of your classes. So for example, if I set a 50% off code for my Turbo Kit class, that code is only for that one class. Like it doesn't apply to all the classes unless I go in and set every single one. So I hope, fingers crossed, Crowdcast if you're watching, that they will come out with a very simple like apply all option, which I think would be really smart and needed, especially for someone who's creating many events on Crowdcast and needing to apply a coupon across many, many, many events, which would be very time consuming to have to do it one by one. Um, so coupons are great because then you can offer promos, you can create specials. Like I did a, um, a free, I mean, I took the price off completely because you can just make free events. So you can take the price wall off completely, which is really nice if you want to offer a free class or if you want to do like I did a free Black Friday weekend. So all my classes over Black Friday and Cyber Monday were free, which was great because then I got new people in. Um, and so there's lots of options to play around with all their different price structures. And that's really great. Uh, okay, next on my list, I'm looking, I'm looking, you can, okay, so Crowdcast creates a really beautiful landing page for each of your classes, each of your events. I'll put a screenshot up for you. And so you can see it's just the, the graphics and the layout, they are really, really on top of that. And that's really important to me. I think that's really important for your marketing, for your branding. And I know that some platforms have emerged in the last few months for fitness professionals and they're very new and and they look very new you know they don't have that real clean cut visual appearance uh and that and that's that is important to me i value that maybe that's not important to you uh, but crowdcast really puts together an awesome experience for the user as far as like what they see so this landing page is what someone would see if they click on the link to your class and then they can read through the description. You can set all the descriptions yourself. You enter in the text, you can do hyperlinks, you can do images um, within the event description. It's really great. And then, so that's all customizable. You can customize the event cover photo. I'll put a screenshot as well. Um, so the cover photo is what shows up on your main profile page on Crowdcast. And um, so your main profile page, quickly I'll show that as well. So the Crowdcast profile page is like where your people can go to see what events you currently have. So my page, I restrict my classes. So, and this is because of music licensing and various other reasons, but you can choose to either have your events public on your profile page, or they can be unlisted, or they can be archived, which means they are hidden fully from anybody. And so your main profile page displays all of your classes. And then that's where you get to choose that profile cover image, which or the event cover image. So a really nice, again, just a visual display of the classes that you have offered currently. Um, and then the other thing that I love about Crowdcast, it, uh, you can download your video when you're finished recording or finished live streaming. And you can do that on YouTube as well. Uh, on Crowdcast, you do get to download the full HD version, and um, I don't think you can. I don't think YouTube is a full HD. I think it's. I think it's high quality, but I don't think it's full HD. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, 
So that's great. Then I can download and save and have that as my in my own files. Uh, another huge thing about Crowdcast versus just streaming to YouTube, you collect people's content, not contact information, their email address upon registration. So let's say somebody finds you on Crowdcast or you've advertised your class elsewhere, anywhere with your link. Um, if somebody wants to try your class, even if it's a free class, they do have to enter their email address and register, very simple registration process. And that way you capture their email address so that you can follow up with them. You can see how they enjoyed the class. You can see if they want to do an extended trial membership or however you have your, uh, you know, your plan laid out for bringing people in. And so I love that because with YouTube, uh, when I was only streaming on YouTube, when people wanted to try my classes, you know, I would share the YouTube link publicly and say, you guys go ahead and try. But then I didn't really know who was trying it, right? Because it's just a link. There's no way to take attendance, so to speak. And Crowdcast does that for you. And then you can also, after the event is done, you can export. So I'll show that screenshot as well. You can export the attendee information for that particular particular class. You can see how many people attended. You see their email address. You can see, uh, did they do the replay? Did they watch live? Um, so lots of analytics in Crowdcast that um, you can't get in YouTube. YouTube offers lots of analytics, but not necessarily analytics about the exact participants and definitely not like your email, their email addresses and their names. Um, what else? You can embed, uh, just like you can embed YouTube, you can embed Crowdcast on your website if you have a website. Um, they do have a lot of Zapier integrations, uh, which is great, but I'm just not a huge... I, I don't know, I just, Zapier is something else you have to pay for then. And of course, if you're rolling in the dough, then maybe it's worth it. <laughs> um, but there's lots of automations you can set with Zapier. Again, that's an additional cost if you wanted to use that, that service. Um, they do integrate with Stripe, so that's their payment gateway. So you do need a Stripe account set up and you have to be able to um, kind of know how to navigate the Stripe back end, uh, the back office of your Stripe account, because that's where you can see, uh, like if someone purchases a, a, a per class option, then you would see that payment in the Stripe backend. So there's nowhere in Crowdcast where you can see the payment coming through. There's no like analytics about that. You do get an email saying someone purchased your class, but to see the actual data, you have to go into Stripe, which is totally fine. Um, and then, so those are all the things that I really love about Crowdcast and why I chose them. Um, the other thing I love about Crowdcast is you can customize the link. So you can customize the back end of your link. And so my, I have a very specific structure for my classes. And um, it's just a feature, I mean, not, not necessary at all, but it looks a little more professional, I think, and just gives my participants an idea of which class they're clicking on. Um, so how I share my links, so I run a simultaneous um, Facebook community group where I share the links and then what's great is that when I share the links, I'll just show a picture of the how I share the links in my Facebook group. So I have a class links post and I put the individual class links that link right to the Crowdcast event in that Facebook group. And what I like is that the Facebook group is completely public, or it's not public, it's a private group, but it's open to anybody. It's not just open to my paying members because I can do that uh, because the Crowdcast links are all behind paywalls. And so if a person in my group of my Facebook group was not a member, then they click on that Crowdcast link and it takes them right to the landing page. And they would have to pay the $8 to take that class. So then let me just quick talk about how I run the membership part with Crowdcast. And this is pretty slick too. So. Again, there are some features that I'm hoping Crowdcast is going to work on soon. I've shared my feedback with them. Um, so what's really great with Crowdcast is you can do uh, mass auto registration as the gym owner. And so what I do is I keep an Excel spreadsheet, actually it's a Google sheet, of all the people that are my members. So my members pay a monthly fee if they want to be a member and then they get access to all classes. They don't have to pay the $8 per class. They're just automatically registered and I do that on my end. And how I do that very easily is I keep a Google spreadsheet. Uh, so I use MemberPress for my membership software and uh, each day I can just export for the current members. And then that CSV file, I simply drag and drop into my Crowdcast class and all those people get registered for the class instantly. 
and they instantly get a registration email saying, you've been registered, here's the link to class, see you there. And I can, I can customize that email too. So they get that instant email. Uh, I just drag and drop the file so that those are current members. And then that takes that process off of their plate, the members plate. So it gives them a really good experience because it's slick. Like they get the email, they get into class or they can access the class from my class links post still. And it takes them straight to the event. They don't have to do any of that payment process. So that's how I manage the membership portion of it. And then, like I said, so if they're not a monthly member, they can pay the $8. If they are a monthly member, I register, register them automatically using the CSV file that is just drag and drop into Crowdcast. Um, and then let me think, if there's anything else on my list that I didn't write down about Crowdcast, um, I think that's it. So let me talk about the things that I wish Crowdcast would change or some cons of Crowdcast that they're probably not gonna change, but that are just some things to consider. So uh, probably the number one thing, Crowdcast is not free. Okay, YouTube is a free platform, obviously. Uh, Crowdcast is not free. Um, and they're not very cheap either. Uh, so you do have to really take a look at the plans that they offer. And I will put links below you guys to all like the pricing pages and everything. I'll put as many links as I can to direct you to the, you can check out my page. You can see how mine is set up. Um, you can look at their price plans and everything, but you do want to look at their options because they do have various tiers and then there are streaming limits, which is also something that's kind of a, a big downfall. Um, obviously you're unlimited, you can stream unlimited on YouTube and to Facebook. With Crowdcast, uh, I have the plan right now currently where I can do 20 hours of streaming, which uh, is usually enough for my classes. I typically run out, like right, I did actually run out last week. And so there are a few days, it's not a huge deal, there are a few days I have kind of a little workaround for this because I can multi-stream with that particular package. Um, I put the YouTube's link in the Crowdcast profile chat area so that when my participants come to class, they just have to click the link over to YouTube. So there's kind of a, a workaround for that, but there are limits, so please look at that before you decide to join or try it out. Um, the other thing that I'm a little frustrated with is that uh, there's not really an easy way to cast the Crowdcast event to your smart TV. There's definitely ways to do it, and you can do it with an HDMI cord. You can, I mean, there's there's definitely ways to do it, but YouTube is so simple with that. I mean, YouTube has that brilliant just cast button, and if you have a smart TV or the YouTube app on your smart TV, it just, poof, it's on your screen. So super, super slick. Um, so it can be done with Crowdcast, it's just not as easy, and, um, and there, they, something did happen over the summer. I don't even think it's fixed yet. I was, I used to be able to, to cast it or to open it on my internet browser on my TV, not cast it. But I used to be able to go to my internet browser and open the event on my smart TV. We have a Samsung, and uh, and then I could just play it. And something is something glitched out on their end, so now I can't do that, and I don't believe it's fixed yet. So anyway, they've got some limitations there. Not a huge deal, especially if your participants are doing the workouts um, using their computer. Then it's totally fine. Um, like I said, HDMI cord works fine to get it to your TV too. Um, there are limits on how many people can be attending your event live. Now, this does not affect me at all right now because I don't have usually more than 10 people live at a time. Lots of people watch the replay because it fits better for their schedules, but they do have limits on live attendees. Uh, I don't think I will really ever hit those, and if I do, that would be great, and that means I would be like, <laughs> having a lot of followers, uh, but I have nowhere near any of that. Um, and then, of course, the last one, you can't see people. Crowdcast is a one-way stream, just like um, just like YouTube or Facebook. It's not like Zoom. Zoom is really the only platform, I believe, and maybe Moxie, where you can see your participants. Um, I just haven't found that's an issue for me, and my participants have actually said that they don't really care at all, and Zoom, just, Zoom is just never a good experience, and they've told me that as well. So, um, so those are the, the cons of Crowdcast, and... 
Uh, as I have been using the platform for almost six months, basically every single day, um, I really have a good feel for the flow of creating events and, and it's very simple. It's very slick. You can duplicate events so that's easy recreation. So for example, I teach the same classes um, each week. So when I want to get my event ready for Turbo Kick, I just go into last week's Turbo Kick and I like duplicate. And then I can just change the few things I need to change and then the event is ready to go. So it's very slick in that regard as well. Not, not a ton of time to make the events um, with the duplication feature. Uh, what else, what else? I'm sure there's more, you guys. I might have to do a part two if I think of other things. Um, I think that's it. I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. You guys, ask any questions. And if you think of things, or if you know of other platforms too, I'm always curious about the new platforms that are emerging, uh, especially for fitness professionals, because there have been some that have emerged. And uh, when I did sign up for Crowdcast, uh, there were not options. It was basically either Zoom or Facebook or YouTube. And again, you can watch my other video about why I chose YouTube. Um, and, and it's working really well. The system I have is working really, really well. There are just a few things that I, would, I, I need Crowdcast to, to do for me. <laughs> uh, and that would make my life even better. Um, but everything works very smooth how it is. And uh, I'm actually gonna be give, putting out a survey to my members in the next couple weeks to get their feedback about how everything is going. And, uh, and then we'll see if we need to make changes. But anyway, I'm always looking at other platforms, just curious, I'm always curious um, to see what comes out. Uh, I know there's going to be a platform that emerges soon for, um, I mean, that has everything. There's really not a platform that has everything yet. They all have some things, but they don't have one that has it all. Uh, so anyway, that's it. I'm gonna wrap it up, you guys. Uh, like I said, check below in the comments area, or not the comments, in the description area. That's where I'll put everything where you can find me, contact me. Uh, you can check out my Crowdcast page. You can do whatever you need to do. And uh, feel free to find me on Facebook. I have a group there as well if you want to join our group. It's a, just a kind of a connection group for people that are live streaming in the fitness industry using OBS um, and other streaming services. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. What am I forgetting? Click subscribe if this was helpful. That would be helpful for me. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and um, stay tuned, you guys. I'm trying to get myself on a pretty regular basis for scheduling videos. I kind of slacked for the last few months because I was like so gung ho into like getting my membership going. That's going great. Now it's like, okay, let's tip back to like YouTube and help the instructors get their memberships going uh, because it's really awesome. Like the, the, the fitness industry has changed in a lot of really negative ways and a lot of really positive ways. And I think we have the opportunity to do things brand new on our own terms, on our own schedule. We make the rules like, and that has not been an option in the past, at least, uh, at least we didn't see it. You know, when we were had the, when gyms were open and we were teaching in person, we didn't quite see all those opportunities. And now that's really all we have the option to see. So uh, anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope it was helpful. And again, leave comments below, say hi, and um, take care. All right, bye-bye.